Today I'm going to talk about all things inverters. To begin with, I'm going to talk about what is an inverter and how does it work. And there are so many different inverters out there, so I'm going to talk about how you size an inverter. Then I'm going to talk about how many batteries you need for an inverter. I'm also going to talk about the proper cabling that you're going to need for an inverter. And then I'm going to actually talk about and even test different types of inverters. And finally, after that, I'm going to talk about how an inverter differs from a gas generator and how an inverter differs from a portable power station. So stay tuned because we have a lot to talk about today. So this is an inverter. But to tell the story of why you need this and how this works, we first have to talk about the battery and the relationship between the inverter and the battery. So the battery, as we all know, stores electrical energy in the form of chemical energy. But here's the thing, this is DC energy, direct current energy. And your house uses AC energy, alternating current. So to take that direct current and turn it into alternating current, this device, this inverter, has a bunch of these. Just a little switch. Now it's not a big switch like this that you'd use to turn on a light. It's a little switch like this. But it's a switch. Because remember, it's alternating current. It goes up and it goes down. So what this does is it turns on and turns off that DC energy and it flips it back and forth, back and forth. So there's a bunch of these in there. So it takes that straight DC and it turns it on, turns it off but it makes it a square. So there's also other stuff in here that turns that square that's going up and down into a sine wave like this. And so on the end of this, you get AC energy that's usable in your house. There are so many inverters out there on the market. Picking the right inverter can seem daunting if not overwhelming. How do you pick the right inverter? Well, it's actually very simple as soon as you understand two words power and watt. So let's break that down a little bit. Every inverter has a number. This one is 1200 W. That's 1200 watts. That's the amount of power that this unit can output. So what you do is you match that to your needs. So let's say you want to run five light bulbs that are 100 watts each. So that's 500 watts of power that you're going to need. So this inverter could run that no problem. So you just match your power needs to the power output of the inverter. So it's really, really straightforward once you understand watt and power. So you're thinking, okay, professor, I match my power needs with the power output of the inverter. I get that, pretty straightforward. But what about the voltage? This 24 volt, 12 volt, 48 volt, what does all that mean? Well, in general, the higher the power, the higher the voltage. So let's break that down. Let's say you need to run 12 thousand watts of power. That's a huge inverter. Now, you don't want to run it on 12 volt. You're going to want to run that on 48 volt. Now, reverse that. Say you only want to run two light bulbs that are 50 watts each. So you need 100 watts of power. Well, then you could use a 12 volt inverter. And those are general rules of thumb. Small load, small power needs use a small voltage, 12 volt. Then high wattage needs, high power needs, use a higher voltage. Now that's a general rule of thumb, and we'll get into that a little bit more when we get into different types of inverters. So now I'm going to show you how simple it is to match your battery with your inverter. Now it does involve some math, but it's very, very simple, so don't be frightened. To begin with, you want to make sure that both your power inverter and your battery are at the same voltage. In this case, they're both 12 volts. Now we're going to take this number, 1500 watts and divide it by 12 volts. That's going to give us 125 amps. That's the maximum amount of current that's going to go through this. So back to our battery. This is a 12 volt battery that can do 100 amps of current. So in this case, we would actually need two batteries to match this inverter. So it's very, very straightforward to do. Now that we know the maximum amount of current that's going to go through the system, we can pick our cable. And each one of these cables can handle a different amount of current. So we want to match that to our system. Now in our case, we need something that can do 125 amps. So this here can do about 20 amps, way, way, way too small. This is a four gauge wire, do maybe 85 amps, way, way, way too small. Now this is a two gauge cable, it can do about 125 amps, so this would technically work. But this is a 2 aught cable. This thing can push up to 200 amps. So really, I would recommend something bigger. Now, you don't want to go minimum requirement. 
This technically would work, but you really want to bounce up to something a little bit bigger, and I'll tell you why. If you have something small, even something that is sized properly, there's going to be some heat. So if you have something bigger, you're going to have less heat. So you're going to have less loss in your system. You're going to have more efficiency. Also, they're safer because one of the biggest problems with systems is wires that are too small, that get too hot, it can actually cause a fire. So always get something that is a little bit bigger than you need. So again, for us, we need 125 amps. This would work, two gauge, but I would recommend going something bigger like this 2 aught that can do almost 200 amps. Now I'm gonna do a deep dive and compare and test different inverters. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said that all inverters work pretty much the same. They take DC energy, they flip it back and forth, and they turn it into AC energy. Well, not all inverters do as good of a job. Some are better at it than others. Some are more efficient than others. So we're gonna test and I'm gonna show you why cheap inverters are to be avoided and why a good quality inverter is better for your system and will be more cost effective in the long term. So I'm gonna be using different tools to do a series of tests to show you the differences between cheap inverters and nice inverters. Different load, different capacities, different efficiencies, stuff like that. But first thing I wanna talk about is safety. Every system needs to be fused. Now I'm not gonna be using a fuse on this because this of course is a demo test setup, but you wanna make sure you fuse between your battery and the rest of your system. And to do that, you get a fuse that is 125% of the maximum current that would go through it. So for example, let's say you have a system that's gonna be 100 amps. You wanna use a 125 amp fuse. Then there's different fuses you can use. This is a terminal fuse. I love using them because they're easy to put on. You can use an A and L fuse. And if you have a big system, you can even use a class T fuse. But you wanna make sure you properly fuse your system. The next thing is consider using a resistor when you hook up your battery to your inverter. So you're gonna hook up your positive to your battery. And then when you hook up your negative to your battery, you could potentially see a spark. And that's because when you complete the circuit, you can send a large amount of energy into the inverter and that creates that spark. So to get around that, what you do is you put this on your battery and then you put this on the end of your resistor and that reduces the likelihood of having a spark. Just something to consider if you don't wanna see that spark. So now I wanna highlight the differences between an inexpensive inverter and a quality inverter. So this is a cheap 1500 watt 12 volt inverter. This is a mid range, but really nice 2000 watt 12 volt inverter. I really like using this inverter, but I wanna show you the differences. To start with the voltage. This inverter says 110 volt on it, and you can see it only does 110 volts. This one does 120 volts, you can see right here, it has a 120 volt output. So starting off, this one is already at a lower voltage. To me, one of the most frustrating and potentially damaging reasons to not buy a cheap inverter is the rated power versus the actual power. So the blue cheap inverter that's hooked up says it can do 1500 watts. I have it attached to my space heater, which should do about 1300 watts. So watch this. Turn it on, look at the load. Not even 700 watts, should be about 1300 watts. So let me show you what they're doing. Look at how low that voltage drops. So this can cause damage to appliances or to anything you hooked up to it. So it is a huge reason not to buy a cheap inverter. Now both did put out a pretty decent sine wave even under load, there it is with no load. There's a little bit of a load, not bad. And here's the nicer inverter. I'll put a little load on that. You see, not that bad a sine wave. Just for comparison, I hooked up this really cheap inverter to show you what its output is. And you can see there's that stepped square output that I was talking about. You definitely don't want this because this can cause a lot of inefficiency, a lot of heat, uh, and it can even damage a lot of equipment. So you definitely don't want to have an inverter that has a stepped or modified sine wave. These can cause a lot of problems and are to be avoided at all costs. Another consideration is what they call idle consumption, and that is the amount of energy that the unit uses 
just on but not doing anything and it can be a silent killer it can drain your batteries if it's a high number so here on this cheaper inverter it's 1.7 amps so that means when the unit is on and it's doing nothing it's still going to be taking 1.7 amps and you times that times your 12 volts that'll tell me how many that'll that'll tell you how many watts it's using just to be on so let's compare that to the other inverter so you can see on this inverter the idle consumption is significantly less it's 0.9 so that is something to consider with the cheap inverters is they're going to use more energy just being on just because the efficiency of the unit is not as good as a higher quality unit and that can be considerable the cheaper inverter is going to use almost twice the energy just being on so if you have this somewhere where it's remote and you need it on 24 hours a day that can really add up and cause you to have to have more batteries in your system so this is a little bit more of an advanced topic but i want to show you real quick i have my tester in here and that middle light is the only one on that means it has an open ground you can see there's no grounding rod on it let's go over to the other inverter now this one also shows open ground but you can see right here it does have a grounding rod so just something to consider when building out your system so earlier in the video i said a standard rule of thumb is 12 volt is good for small systems but you can get a 4000 watt 12 volt inverter here it is but it does come with drawbacks the biggest is the wire needed this is going to be pushing over 300 amps so you're going to need massive wiring so yes you can get a 4000 watt or even bigger 12 volt inverter there are drawbacks to using a large 12 volt power inverter every inverter that i've talked about today is what's known as a high frequency inverter but that's not the only type of inverter out there there are other types there's low frequency inverters and remember i talked about how this one has a bunch of switches in it and it takes the DC and turns it into AC. Well, a low frequency inverter works the same way, except it has a massive transformer in the middle of it. So it actually physically separates the DC side and the AC side, and it can take really big inductive loads. So they're more powerful, they're more robust, but they're more expensive and they're more bulky. But you definitely can get a low frequency inverter too. Now, high frequency inverters are great. As long as you get a good quality inverter, one that has all the safety features in it, they're perfectly fine to use. But if you do need a massive, massive inverter that can take huge loads and huge surges, consider getting a low frequency inverter. And there are other inverters too. There's hybrid inverters. And what a hybrid inverter is, is it actually has a charge controller built into it. So you can hook solar panels directly into it. They're very popular and they're very powerful. And you can get them in either low or high frequency as well. So a question I often get is, how does an inverter differ from a gas generator? Well, really at their core, they do the exact same thing. Now an inverter, like we talked about, takes stored chemical energy and turns it into AC energy. And really a gas generator does the same thing because all gas is is stored energy. So that generator is just converting the stored electrical energy into mechanical energy and then turning that into AC energy. So really it's a little less efficient because it has to do one extra step. But they're very similar. They're just converting stored energy into AC energy. The last thing I want to talk about is what's the difference between a solar generator or a portable power station versus a inverter. Well, there really is no difference. A portable power station just has an inverter built into it, and then it has other things in it as well. It's got a charger. Usually it's got an AC charger and a solar charge controller, and it's got a battery in it and a bunch of other electronics. But at its core, it just has an inverter. So really the only difference is a power station has an inverter built into it, where an inverter is just an inverter. So if anybody has any questions about anything you've seen today, please leave a comment below. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And I will talk to everyone soon.